in 2022. It's lights out and lift off for MotoGP in 2022 in Qatar. Not a bad start for the top man, Jorge Martin, although big, big moment. The two reps of London's got away brilliantly. Mark Marquez gets the whole shot. Palace Fargo slots into second. The initial launch good for Martin. Then he got it bogged. Big moment. But it's the two reps of London's who lead. From Brad Binder, who's up into third place. He's trying to go right around the outside of Mark Marquez. The two factory Ducatis had terrible starts. Fabio Quartararo immediately ahead of both of the factory Ducatis. He's trying to go up the inside of Tramir. Quattararo looks like he's gained at least four places and he's got both factory Ducatis and the pole man behind him. Paul Espargo leading on a Repsol Honda. We would never have said that at any time last year, would we? Pekka Magnaia had a shocking start from the back of the third row. Ninth, back to 15th place. As Lewis said, the two factory Ducatis just completely missed the start. Already getting aggressive, getting busy. as 2020 champ, Juan Mir. We know how good he is at coming through the pack. We know how good he is as well at making overtakes and keeping his tyres in good order. Do not discount uh, Juan Mir. Was that Martin trying to recover the lost ground he made off the start? It was a he, poor start from Martin. He was trying to get the inside of Alicia Spargro. He lost the position back to him again, though, after going at the inside. But dream ticket for the Repsol Honda team. Paul Spargro leading as Fabio Quattararo makes progress. This is where he has to make his progress, in this infield section, where the straight line speed isn't going to hamper him. Up the inside of Jorge Martin. Just the first lap that Quattararo needed, up to P7 from 11th on the grid. Yeah, already getting wheel spin on that medium Michelin rear tyre through that tyre torturing turn 11 there Fabio Quattro just about keeping Jorge Martin at bay although with the slipstream and the power of the Catty down the start finish straight he might be easily picked off the Yamaha has been about anything between 10 and 12k slower brilliant by the world champion ex-world champion Juan Mio just sticks his leg out there maybe an apology quickly to Anaya Bastianini he got through on the Italian at turn 15 Martin doesn't need the slipstream in the top speed of the Ducati to pick off Quattararo he's got underneath the Yamaha man in the final corner at turn 16 who would have expected this then at the end of the first lap it's a Repsol Honda 1-2 it's a Spargro leaning from Mark Marquez is Marquez going to go through immediately up the inside of his teammate he goes Paul Spargro doesn't fight it too hard who would have expected Brad Binder to be next behind them and Paul Spargro straight away sending a message to his teammate he ain't no number two at Honda yeah Marquez was just in that little bit hot he went a little bit wide maybe a meter offline no second invitation needed for Polis Fargo to take the lead back excellent first lap excellent start for Brad Binder We've always said he's a Sunday man, he can qualify well, you know he's going to be in the game, you know he's going to be fighting in that top six, well it's better so far, the KTM man up inside that top three, what a first lap as well it was for Juan Mir, he's been a big mover from eighth to fourth. Andrea Di Vizioso by a couple of places, Binder, both Binders, having a pretty impressive opening night. Yeah, there are some riders in this field that are having a bit of a humbling start to 2022. Jack Miller we mentioned, he's just lost another place as well to Taki Nakagami, likewise, Frankie Morbidelli on his uh, factory Yamaha start in 2022. He's down in 17th place. He's been pushed out of the point scoring place. The fully fit Frankie Morbidelli as well now. Now then, can an air bash needs to catty do anything about the reps? Londra Mark Marquez directly ahead of him. He's picked up some slipstream. He'll have the inside line and he eases by Mark Marquez on the brakes into the first corner. So Marquez. Is he going to pull it a little bit tighter? No, oh, Mia's gone well, well wide. Likewise, Jorge Martin, that's the slipstream effect. That's just those extra five, six, seven kilometers now you pick up in the slipstream. It just changes your braking marker. We saw it last year. Pekka Bagnaia actually lost the chance of a victory when he ran in hot at the first corner in the Grand Prix of Qatar last year. So it's an easy mistake to make. Simon, down to you for some thoughts. Yeah, just about that braking area when we first saw it with Mark, now a couple of others that in recent years with the wings they help the bike stop as well when that device clicks back up into place and the wings angle of attack works they rely on it with their braking marker but if there's someone in front of them in the braking area the wings don't work and they can't stop yeah all that dirty air around the wings yeah good point simon so polis bargaro well it's been plan a gone to perfection so far for him he made a brilliant launch off the line from sixth place on the grid. And he's been happy to make the front running here, of course. There's been missed opportunities, hasn't there, in the past of Polis Bargo. He's been so tantalizingly close to breaking his Premier Class victory duck. I'm sure wherever you are in the world watching from the sofas on the virtual fan wall, you're enjoying this cracking start to the 2022 MotoGP World Championship. Polis Bargo is has the advantage from Brad Binder, still there in second place. Bastianini in uh, third, Marquez fourth, then it's Mia. And Lacey Spargo trying to get on in this podium battle as well on the factory Aprilia.
I wonder whether there's a problem for Jack Miller. He's dropped right the way down to last position. Now he's two seconds even behind Ralph Fernandez at the back of the field. There is clearly some sort of issue with the 43 Ducati and Juan Mia, who we expected to go forwards, is going backwards. That's Alicia Spargaro picking him off. Yeah, Mia's getting a bit beaten up here, isn't he? Getting a bloody nose. The former world champion Miller must have some kind of problem then, as, uh, as Lewis said, he's dropped all the way back. There's a yellow flag as well. Yeah, Marco Bezzecchi is dropping down the field, unfortunately. The rookie who's had such an impressive weekend. Bezzecchi has dropped off the tower on the left-hand side of the screen, so we think something may have gone wrong. Mir looking to fight back against Alicia Spargro. Both Suzuki's really in the middle of the battle. Alex Rins just behind. He's trying to keep Jorge Martin at bay. Jack Miller has entered the pit, and Marco Bezzecchi, unfortunately, has entered the gravel trap. Oh, Jack Miller doesn't have a lot of luck, does he, here in Qatar? You remember when that seat worked loose a few years ago? And then last year, I remember in the opening Grand Prix, he had a mystery vibration problem on the right hand side of his tyre, it was almost launching him to the moon through all the right handers, so Jack Miller's woes in Qatar continue. There's Marco Betseki, sadly it's been a real promising MotoGP debut up to that point for Betseki, he slides out at the final corner when he was looking well set for a point scoring finish. Yellow flags and are still out in all sectors, I'm sure Simon's going to try and find out exactly what happened to uh, Jack Miller. Bad start to the year for the Australian when he needs a good start to the year to ensure that he's putting himself at the forefront of the mind of the Catty management for that coveted factory seat next year. It's been knees and elbows and hands all, all going between these two, Mia and Alexis Spargaro. Surprised to see Mia struggling to run the pace at the front at the moment. Will he come on strong in the latter stages? Absolutely. Well, he's leaving himself a little bit of work to do at the moment. He's only a second off the lead at the moment, although that top four do appear to be getting a little bit of uh, breathing space out of the front. But it just underlines how competitive MotoGP is in 2022. Five different manufacturers in this six wider leading group. Paul Espargo leading for Honda ahead of a KTM of Brad Binder, a Ducati of Anaya Bastianini, the second Honda of Mark Marquez with an Aprilia and a Suzuki right on tree. On course, though, for an emotional win will be Enea Bastianini. He's right now on the rear tyre of the Repsol Honda man. How much do you want it, Paul? He's going to be desperately searching for grip in these closing five laps of the race. And this is a symbol of just how competitive and just how deep the talent pool is in MotoGP. The first Grand Prix of the 2022 season, and we have two riders battling it out for their maiden Grand Prix victory in the class. Yeah, now he's going to try and use a bit of the catty power, or will he try and attack before turn 16 and then try and fire away from Polis Bargro? I wonder what's going through the minds right now of the likes of Peko Bagnar and Jack Miller. This is the bike they rode so brilliantly well last year. They're both out of this Grand Prix, and the bike that they gave up last season, not through choice, of course, is potentially on course to win the season-opening Grand Prix here in Qatar. They come through the fast right-handers. Polis Bargro still standing firm. A bit of a twitch there on the front end for Bastianini. This is all about your rear tyre choice now, and it looks like with that medium compound on the rear of that Grazini Ducati, it's better in the hands of Bastianini. Will he attack at turn 15? No, he's not going to take the big risk. It just looks like now it's a matter of time before he hits the front. Bide his time, be patient. He's got the better speed at this stage of the race than Polis Bargro. He doesn't need to take big risks. He doesn't need to be rash. A little bit of a shake from the uh, nose of that Honda for Polis Bargro as he came round turn 14. But here is where they expect the move to happen. And here Bastianini then pulls out a there slip stream straight past Polis Bargro. Can Polis Bargro get back past? Does he have any grip on the brakes to get past? No. Bastianini gets his stop to Polis Bargro. In oh, fact, runs wide into turn it. one. That's game over for Paul Spargo. he did that in one of the Grand Prix here last year, the crash has been building, wow what's going through the thoughts here now of the Grazzini team and of course the mistake from Paul Spargo now means that it's Binder and Mark Marquez back on the podium no, or Alexis well, Spargo Binder, yeah, rather, Brad, sorry Brad Binder's uh, in second, Paul Spargo has got back on in third he's just managed to hold up his brother but yeah the brothers could soon be battling it out for the final podium position the Suzuki challenge just hasn't materialised Mir and Rins running solidly in the low 155s they are closing in Mir's closing in on the back of Mark Marquez so we could see those two battling for fifth position but this is the battle for the lead and Enea Bastianini four laps away from history well Honda said they'd found some horsepower in the wind today clearly how that's all though about the drive as well that you get off that third gear final corner. Polis Bargro was desperately trying to resist. He just got a bit of slipstream behind Enea Bastianini, a bit of dirty air as well. He runs in hot and that looks like it might be victory hopes over. Still on course for a potential top three, a great way to start the year, but Enea Bastianini, it's in his hands now. What an emotional win this would be. Oh, 
This team was set up by Fausto Grazzini before he tragically lost his life just over one year ago to COVID-19. I'm sure Fausto is looking down now and being so proud of what he left behind. His widow down there in pit lane, she can barely watch the action. And Ea Bastianini on course for what would be a truly emotional and remarkable win. What a way to kick off 2022 in MotoGP. Yeah, what an incredible podium we're potentially staring at. Three laps to go as they come across the line now. Brad Binder has just kept himself in the fight. He's not faded like we thought he might. With those medium tyres, they're really helping him in the closing stages of this Grand Prix. He leads Paul Espargo over the line by three tenths of a second and looks pretty comfortable there in second place. Espargo, that's Espargo Paul, may soon be looking in his uh, looking over his shoulder for his older brother, Estelage Espargo. Can Aprilia still find their way onto the podium in this season opener? I'll be gobsmacked if there's any fingernails left in that Grazzini garage <laughs> right now because this is real tense stuff. Big, big twitch again. Look at Palace Fargo. He's got nothing left in that soft rear tyre. He had a twitch going into turn four, a twitch coming out of it as well. There is Nadia Padoviani, the Grazzini Racing MotoGP team principal. I'm sure there's, the tears are going to be flowing post-race here. For Nea Bastini, he can hang on. He looks so good. He looks so comfortable. What a star Ducati have in the making here as well. This was a guy that only won five races in his Moto3 career. He went on to win the Moto2 World Championship and a new star is being born and created right here now. What a night as well for Red Bull Kate in factory racing with Brad Binder on course to take a podium. A dream start for new team manager Francesco Guidotti. Absolutely. This was a circuit that it was well, a circuit that historically has never suited the KTM. As mentioned, they've never been in the top six here in the Moto GP race. But Brad Binder, a cracking qualifying lap yesterday to put himself on the third row of the grid. A brilliant start to get himself away with that leading group, and he has stuck around throughout the course of this Grand Prix. Apollo Spargo just scrabbling for grip, unable to really make a challenge. But this is the rider that they're all trying to catch. And then Air Bastini continuing to lap pretty solidly in the 155s. Brad Binder was actually quicker than the leader on that last lap but not enough at the moment to close in that lead 1.3 seconds yeah Palace Bargo attacked didn't he on that soft rear tyre trying to make the gap and then hoping he can manage it towards the latter stages of the Grand Prix it hasn't quite worked out although at the moment he's hanging on to the podium he's coming under pressure though from his older brother Polish by group. There's a bit of bragging rights at stake here, as well as 16 points. Brad Binder looks secure in second. This man looks really good. Bastianini, 1.2 seconds clear. The race-winning challenge, the podium challenge, we thought was going to come from Mir and Rins. It hasn't materialised at all. Likewise, Fabio Quattararo at the moment in eighth place, and he's coming under attack from Joan Zarco behind him. In fact, Zarco on the Prime Ducati has just set a personal best lap of the race. A 154.6. That was eight tenths faster than Fabio Quattararo. Quattro actually might lose that eighth, eighth spot and drop back down to nine. Absolutely, a chastening opening night for the reigning world champion. One of the battles that I think we will be seeing on this final lap is between the two Espargaro brothers. Here they are, Paul Espargaro running in third position, but Alessio Espargaro is one of the few riders in these closing stages able to still oh. lap in the 154. Paul, Paul Espargaro has just got nothing left in that soft rear tyre. We just saw him there coming out of turn six on the gas. It was like a bucking Bronco, bouncing and pumping He's just now hanging on for dear life, trying to hope that that soft rear tyre hangs in there, and he hopes behind him. <laughs> the tears are already flowing. We can't underestimate just what a special moment this will be in the history of the MotoGP World Championship. Fausto Grazzini was one of the most long-serving and loyal members of this MotoGP World Championship. He had teams in Moto3, teams in Moto2, teams in MotoGP. He loved and lived for racing. And there is his wife, Nadia, looking on. And she is about to see Enea Bastianini, a man who, of course, was given his big break in World Championship racing by Fausto Grazzini, a man who he had faith in, a man who he believed in. And now that faith and belief is being repaid big time. We're going to choke up here in the commentary box as well here, aren't we? Because Enea Bastianini has, what, just over 5.3 kilometres to go between himself and the most emotional of Grand Prix victories here in Qatar. Yeah, Brad Binder, to his credit, isn't giving up on this just yet. He was a tenth quicker once again on that penultimate that, but it will only take a mistake now for an Ea Bastianini to lose this one. Brad Binder, though, second place incoming for the first Grand Prix of the season for the factory KTM team. What a start for Francesco Guidotti and that new 
Honda that we've talked about all winter. Looks like it might just hang on to a podium. Polis Gragaro has got four tenths of a second in his pocket over his older brother Aleish. And Mar Marquez still holding firm ahead of Juan Mir. Mir doesn't appear to have enough to close in for fifth position. You can see there the team views on the left hand side of your picture. And now Bastianini now coming through this second sector. They don't think Brad Binder's going to be close enough to try and deny him this famous victory. It looks like as well Polis is going to hang on for third place. Great job by him on the Repsol Honda. It looks like he's ran out of grip on that soft tyre, but it's all about one man and one team. And now Bastianini on the Grazzini Racing Ducati, the year-old GP Ducati 21. He threatened this when he topped the timesheets. He topped the leaderboard in that official test in Sepang. He said all along, this new bike is capable of winning. I can fight for the championship on this bike. I'm not sure too many people believed him on that year on motorcycle, but here he goes on course, well set to win the opening Grand Prix here in Qatar. Yeah, Binder's closing in though on this final lap. It's down to six tenths of a second that lead, so Binder is just keeping the Grassini team sweating right the way down to the checkered flag, but only two more corners to go. And here Bastianini just needs to keep it smooth through turn 15 and only turn 16 to go for a hugely emotional victory and a historic occasion for the beast. Wow. Binder's closing. Binder is closing, and now Bastianini. He's got to be careful here. They come out of the final corner. And they are Bastien, and he's surely on course for a famous victory. The beast reigns supreme in the Middle East. What an emotional victory for Anaya Bastianini and the Grizzly. It also comes to a close with the end of the MotoGP race. All we can do is to see the race ranking together. See you in a moment for the podium ceremony. Cameras are taking us into Park Ferme to the race winner, who is rightly celebrating with his... We're live for the podium ceremony where there's an Italian flag flop.